the respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in his mighty book that he sent to us, that he sent to mankind for our benefit, not for his. O oh, you who have believed, O oh, people of Iman, people about whom it is almost a past and done and dusted fact that you are believers, fear Allah, ward off Allah's punishment. Brothers and sisters, part of our Iman and part of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we love Allah and that we fear Allah. And part of our, our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we have hope in Allah. And part of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is we take precaution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, fear Allah, take practical means to ward off Allah's punishment. وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا And say a straight and direct and truth word. Say something that's true, do not lie. يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ He will make all of your deeds go right. He right. will make your life go correct. Turn to Allah, fear Allah in all aspects of your life and everything will go right. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And He will forgive. Overlooked, forgiven and forgotten, done. وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And whoever obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger has already saved himself, has already succeeded. You don't need to die, you have already succeeded. By being here today, you have already succeeded. The success that is to come is something even greater. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us countless times in the Qur'an that we have to obey him and that we have to obey his messenger. In fact, we don't actually find any examples in the Qur'an where Allah tells us to obey him except that it says, and his messenger. Certain people today, they make a claim that they, will, they only want to follow the Qur'an. They say the Qur'an is enough. Hadiths can be sahih, can be da'if, can be clear, not clear etc. So we're not really interested. That's completely false. That's absolutely false. Nobody of the believers has ever said anything like that. Despite all the various different opinions that, that people have and the different scholars that they have, different ideas, nobody has these ideas. Right? This is not part of our Iman. Our Iman is that we follow the Prophet وسلم, and his messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Qur'an الَّذِينَ يَنْقُضُونَ أَهْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مِثَاقِهِ وَيَقْطَعُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلْ وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said and those who break and those who break that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who, those who break the pact, the agreement with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala مِنْ بَعْدِ مِثَاقِهِ Just after. Just after it's been made. Right, you speak to somebody and then they change their mind afterwards. That's ba'd in Arabic. That's called ba'd, that's called after. But you speak to them and they change their mind. مِنْ بَعْدِهِ That's straight after. I just, we just agreed and you're changing your mind. Just after this mithaq, just after you took this tremendous weighty covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you change your mind. وَيُفْسِدُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ and الذين ينقضون عهد الله من بعد ميثاقه ويقطعون ما أمر الله به أن يوصل ويفسدون في الأرض and they break that which Allah subhanahu wa taala ordered to be connected and they spread corruption in the earth. There's a connection. You break that which Allah subhanahu wa taala told you to keep together, and what's the what's the what's the what's the نتيجه what's the result? And if sad, facade, corruption. Here we are as believers on the face of the earth. And we're not just believers on the face of the earth, we are also a minority, a group of minority Muslims in a country. For the believers in general, and especially for us here as, minority, as a minority group, the sense of community, the sense of identity, identifying, feeling that you're part of something is extremely important. Unbelievably important. If you don't feel like you're part of this mosque, why would you turn up? If every day someone kicks you out of the mosque, you're not going to turn up. If they kick you out of another mosque, you're not going to go there either. Which mosque are you going to go to then? 
if our children and our brothers and our sisters and our parents do not feel that they are part of our families because of the way that we speak to them, because of the way that we deal with them, and because we cut ties with them, I'm a good person but I don't talk to him because he's a bad person. I'm a mashallah, I'm a good person, but so and so they did this and this in the past, so we don't talk to them. Our family doesn't talk to that family. This is not an Islamic system. Our children look at us, look at us in the face and say, This is, you, Daddy, you are Islam. You are Islam. If you cut ties with other people, I understand that Islam is not a system that works. Islam is a tribal thing about my clan and your clan. That's what I understand. You can say whatever you want, you can teach him the whole Qur'an, you can send him to whatever university to study Islam, but he's going to come back and say, Daddy, the Islam that you taught me was, we don't like so-and-so because they said this. They didn't invite us to this wedding, so we don't go. We don't, we, they didn't invite us, so we don't invite them. This kind of tit-for-tat and, and mentality is not Islamic. It's not Islamic. And if we keep this, this kind of mentality in our families, we, we cannot hope for a future for Islam in this country because the, our children will look at us and say no nah, Islam doesn't work I'll go somewhere else I saw how my parents spoke to each other I saw how my father spoke with his, with his brother I saw how my father spoke with his mother I see here how he deals with this whole mess I, I'd rather not I'll, I'll, I'll take something else I'll find another path so it is a critically important now when we are trying to think about the future of Islam don't go and spend money in the mosque. Don't go and spend money on uh, teaching your kids, children, Quran. Fix your family. Make your family spell Islam. Your family, the way that you deal with things, immediately in the household and with your in the greater family, it spells out Islam. Otherwise, what are they going to read? They're going to read something else. It doesn't spell out Islam. It speaks to something else. So this is you've seen all of the making corruption and making it impossible for me as a child to look up to this and say, I want to be a Muslim. You, you give me an impossible uh, task. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَيْسَ الْوَاصِلْ بِالْمُكَافِئِ The person who keeps family ties is not the person who simply does what others done, do to me. Well, they invited me to the wedding, I go to the wedding. They invited me last week, I invite them this week. If they didn't invite me last week, why would I invite them? They didn't support me while I was studying, why would I support them? They didn't help my mum when she needed help, I'm not going to help them. Right? That's a common mentality. And the normal human being who defends that themselves has a, an animalistic defense. That's how they work. You didn't help me, I don't help you. That's not Islam though. Islam is, you didn't help me, I'll help you. You cut me off, I'll, I'll connect you. Like in the Prophet ﷺ said, he said, he said, Allah said, Allah said, Allah said, Man idha quti'atu rahimuhu wa salaha. When people cut him off, he doesn't cut them off. Yeah, you, were, you said very bad things about my mom. And you cast my mom and my dad out of the family. And you never helped us when we needed you. But I will help you. You didn't even mention to us that we're getting married. Let alone invite us. But I'll invite you. In fact, I'll put you on the chair right next to me. That's Islam. That's Islam. Otherwise, what message are we giving? What, 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 is, in, what, what is good about Islam when you, you, you sit on a mat? Aladdin sits on a mat. What's the big deal? What is it? You know, what is it that's, 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 that's impressive? These beautiful, this beautiful, perfect system that creates hearts that love each other. People who grow up in a household and they love each other and they want to be a part of this thing. And they're able to grow spiritually because they have been fed emotionally. But they're not able to grow spiritually and connect with the lost upon Ta'ala when they are coming out of the Hades, right, the hell of a completely chaotic family system where everybody hates everybody and nobody forgives anybody and it goes on for generation after generation after generation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَهَلَّ أَسَيْتُمْ إِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ أَن تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَتُقَطِّعُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ And may it well be that if you turn away and go to some other kind of system that your mind wants, or whatever it is you want to do, that you should spread corruption in the land, وَتُقَطِّعُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ And you should viciously and violently and mercilessly break. قطع means to cut. تقطيع means to cut into pieces. Dicing. You're not cutting family ties, you are dicing family ties. You're doing haram yourself, and what are you doing to the community? How can you look your child child in the eye and say, you know, 
Beta, I want you to be a good Muslim. How? Right? We have to make sure that we are living examples of Islam. And that's the message. The details, the letter of the law can be spelt out easily. But if there's no spirit in the household, where, where is it going to be learned? You are Islam. You are Islam. The message that you give to your children, that is Islam. There's no other Islam. What they said in the mosque, something else. But you are Islam. وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ يَا فَوْزُ مُسْتَغْفِرِينَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah سبحانه وتعالى First of all Allah سبحانه وتعالى said in the Quran يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an O oh, you who have believed It's a past tense to show tahakkuk You are mutahakkiteen You are realized in your iman It actually applies in your house Fear Allah, ward of Allah And let every single one of you Look very carefully to what he puts forward for tomorrow The next generation what are we looking for tomorrow? Your death, your muqiyama. Where is the Muslim community tomorrow if we don't correct things ourselves? It doesn't happen anywhere else. Wattaqullah and fear Allah. Allah is, uh, uh, Allah is fully aware of all the little things you keep doing. Ta'maloon, in the Arabic language they say this is for mudari' al-istimrar, tajaddud. You keep doing these little things you keep doing. The way that you treat other people, the way that you talk to other people, Allah is fully aware of all those little intricacies. He knows every single thing that you're doing. And he's going to ask you, what about this? What about this? What about this? How you talk to your child. How you talk to your wife. How you talk to your, your family. How we do business. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of all of these things. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a hadith, خلق الله الخلق that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created every single thing فلما فرغ قامت الرحم فقالت that the, the womb got up and stood before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فقالت هذا مقام العاذب بك من القطيع here is, here stands somebody seeking protection from you O oh Allah from being cut off the womb itself Family ties themselves stood up before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and said, Oh Allah, I'm seeking protection from you right now that, that I'll be cut off. I am sacred, something sacred in your eyes. I seek protection from you from being cut off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded, saying, Ala tardayna an asila man wasalaki wa aqta'a man qata'aki? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded saying, Would you not be content, O womb, O family ties, that I should cut, that I should be, I should bring close to me anybody who brings you close, and that I should cut off, sever, detach, abandon anybody that detaches and abandons you and turns your back on you. فَقَالَتْ بَلَى يَا رَبْ She said, well, of course. That wasn't what even I was expecting. Bella is like, well, of course. I was thinking that you're going to punish them, not you're going to cut them off. You give me this rank that I am you. If they cut me off, you cut them off. Bella, ya Rabb, of course. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Fadak. That is what I'm going to do. So this has been a qa'idah kawniya, a universal principle of this world. That whoever breaks family ties, Allah cuts them off. Okay, if you are being physically harmed by somebody, of course. If the person tries to kill you every single time you see them, tries to hurt you physically, but you don't cut them off. If they've let you down, don't you can't. That doesn't mean you can you can break you can you can break break somebody's family ties. So, oh, I'm trying to keep boundaries. Yeah, keep boundaries. That doesn't mean that you can't help them. Listen, in the past, I helped you out and I told you certain things and you shared it with other people. I'm not going to, by the way, share my secrets with you anymore. 
that's fine. Last time I lent you some money and you said you're going to pay me back within six months, it didn't happen. The second time, the third time, I'm sorry, I'm not going to lend you any money. I can't do that. That's fine. But that doesn't mean, hi, how are you doing? I heard you had a baby, mashallah, do you need any help? And they say, yeah, can you lend me a million dollars? Yeah, sorry. You at least kind to them. Yeah, it doesn't mean all or nothing. I either I'm really your buddy or I hate you. No. I protect myself from you because you're trying to harm me. I know that. But I'm still going to help you. This is Islam. This is Ihsan. This is what the Prophet taught us. And the Prophet is asked, what is the best type of charity? What is the best type of charity? And the Prophet in various hadiths mentioned, uh, responded in various different ways. And in this particular hadith, this is in uh, uh, Tabarani, and it's a hadith that is uh, authentic according to uh, Imam uh, Al Mundari. He said, What is the best type of charity? The Prophet answered, Giving charity to your family member that hates you. That guy who's spreading rumors against you, give him charity. The guy who intentionally tried to ruin your marriage, give him charity. The person who, whenever you got asked for help, he's always telling other people not to help you and makes rumors against you, give him. He's now asking you, yeah, I'm in Afghanistan now and I can't afford my med medical bills. Well, pff, too bad. As they say in Arabic, a saifa dayati eleven. In the summer, you in the, in the summer when things were good, you lost the opportunity. Thus, sure, it's now this is just, Allah's punishing you now. No, Allah's not punishing you now. Allah's punishing you for not helping him. Give him money. You got the money, mashallah, help him. Yeah, but he's he's wrong. I know he's wrong. That doesn't mean you can't help him. I know he's a liar. That doesn't mean you shouldn't help, uh, give him money. Giving charity. You are not obliged to give charity. Giving out of your pocket, even though you don't have to do that, to somebody who has no right over you. But he's your family member, and he, he, he is asking for help, and he has, showed, he has done nothing but wrong to you. You do good to him. This is, how, this is Islam. This is Islam. Oh, put put up in your pocket, send him some money. He needs some money for medical bills. He needs help. He needs all these things. Charity. Ala uh, dir uh, al-kashih. Uh, the one who is he's your part of your family tie and he himself he's got all sorts of things against you he has an agenda to ruin your life but yet you help him out this is Islam let alone somebody who is trying to repair things and you're not trying to repair things with them so this is what we need to do in order to be a successful community we cannot be a successful community if we have bad marriages if we have bad family ties because there is no message we are giving to our, to, our, to the youth whatsoever. May Allah uh, give us that tawfiq. Allahumma la tusallit alayna bi dhunubina man la yakhafuna wa la yarhamuna. Allahumma arhamna fa innaka bina rahim. Wa la tu'adzibna fa innaka alayna qadir. Wa altuf bina fi ma jarat bihil maqadir. Allahumma inna nas'aluka shifa' la yugadir saqman. Allahumma inna nas'aluka shifa' la yugadir saqman. اللهم إنا نسألك شفاء لا يغادر سقما يا رب الناس يا رب الناس يا رب الناس أذهب أذهب الباس اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات وارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وأقم الصلاة